there sometimes. I have a very short message tonight. And everybody said, hey. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to flip over. I'm going to read. I'm going to flip to Genesis, uh, fourth chapter. I'm going to read three, and then you can be seated. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and an offering unto the Lord. You can see. It ain't been that long ago that Brother Charles preached from these scriptures. On different meaning. And it kind of it kind of brought something to my attention when he preached on these. And I'm gonna go ahead and read that, uh, read down through seven. And Abel, he also brought of the first firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance failed. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou dost well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You know, I, Brother Charles read, read these scriptures, he read some more of them, and I noticed something there that I had never noticed before. As a matter of fact, after the service that night, I said something to him about it. But, you know, the uh, we always like to uh, repeat what the Word says about no respecter of person. Mm -hmm. You know, we've always heard no respecter of person. Well, the title of my message tonight is God is a respecter of offerings. Come on. Uh -huh. He is a respecter of offerings. Okay. Because you see, he real he saw the offering that Abel made, and he was pleased with it. He was pleased with Abel's offering because he knew his offering came from the heart. Bless him, Lord. Cain's offering, he wasn't too happy with. It. Right. He, he did, it, the word says he had no respect for it. Right. The reason he didn't have any respect for it because he knew where Cain's offering was coming from. It really wasn't coming from the heart. It was just a mediocre offering because he knew he had to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on now. That's true. That's true. You see, so many times we walk in and sit in the sanctuary and we are exactly like Cain. Come on. Uh -oh. We come to church because we want to be on the road. We come to church because we don't want somebody talking about us because we ain't here. We come because this, because that, other than here to show God worship and praise. Right. Come on. My, my. And, and we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. And you see, the thing is, is we get into that slump. And I realized something else in these scriptures that I was studying this evening that I hadn't really realized before. When we get into that slump, let me read that. Let me read that seventh verse again. Well, let me read six and seven. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrong? In other words, why are you mad? Why is thy confidence falling? God's asking him, he just wants him to tell him, because God knows. Uh -huh. God knows. If thou dost well, shall thou not be accepted? If thou dost, in other words, if you do the right thing, would it not have been accepted as well as Abel? Had you done the right thing, the thing you knew you should have done, but you were half-hearted about it. That's right. And if thou dost not, well, this is something that I've noticed the day of studying, Brother Charles, that I really hadn't noticed before. If we start having a bunch of half-hearted offerings for God, sin lies at the door for us. In other words, it is easier for sin to kind of creep in. Yes, it, 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 it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to barge in or slam in, but it'll creep in. Mm -hmm. we, we'll allow it to. It, it's kind of like we've talked about a bunch of times in the gut class about how we the, we we'll, we start uh, allowing the smaller things that really don't seem like that big a deal, and then two or three years down the road, it's a huge deal. Yeah. You realize that since you allowed this little thing, that it becomes a huge stumbling block. Bless him, Lord. And if we come in with the idea of Cain, and you know we, you know we kind of like to focus, we kind of like to focus on 
Well, it was what he offered God. In other words, he, what he gave him, you know, out of the field and everything. Yeah, that's part of it. That is part of it. But had he been given it from the heart, he would have given God the best he had to give. And, the best, and you know what? It may have been just as good of vegetables or just as good of whatever as anything else. It could have been just as good as the rest of his stuff. But Cain came at it half-heartedly and was just doing it just because he knew he needed to. You see, if we allow our worship to be at that point to where we're doing it just because people won't think we're not worshiping. My, my. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I better stand up, raise my hands a little bit, so I think I'm mad. Bless him, Lord. Oh, me. Mm -hmm. You know. Amen. I, I, I've never really thought, Brother Billy, I've never really thought about it under that circumstance. But you see, this isn't the only time God has been a respecter of an offering. And so, we're going to flip over to Malachi. The very first chapter. And I don't know if y'all, I don't know if a lot of y'all know this or not. Uh, well, if you go and study the book of Malachi, Malachi was the very last prophet to bring forth a word from God. The very last one. Till when? No, John the Baptist. You know that was a 400 year period of time? You think your prayers didn't get heard last night? You think praying to the ceiling for 400 years? Mm. It's amazing what you will discover if you go and study the Word. It is. I mean, truly it is. <clears throat> and, and we're going to read, I'm going to read uh, the first, first chapter, I'm going to start at verse 6. A son honor his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest, that despise my name, and ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? You see, he's getting into... Malachi has come forth trying to explain to them how they are starting to just be going through the motions. He's trying to show them and let them to understand even the priest has just got mediocre. They're not bringing forth the power of God. They're not trying to stir up the power of God. They just got in the motions and they know what to go through and they get paid and they go home. You know, it's like I was uh, quoting here a while back. I think Brother Jody even said something about it. I was quoting uh, Don Wildman. Don Wildman, man, I heard that on the radio that day. He was talking on there. He was talking about he went back to a bunch of different things. He said... He said, Christians today, we go to church, the preacher preaches, we go home. And then he started mentioning things that 30 years ago was against the law and wouldn't allow. But now, they are. But Christians, oh, we still go to church, we let the preacher preach, and we go home. But you see, we need to stand up. And when we come to church, Show a worship to God and wipe out the mediocre. You see, if we just start stumbling into that mediocre, the problem with that is we don't feel any power. You know that little tingle you get up your spine every now and then when that certain song's on, or that you you hear that certain word spoke or preached, or you know, I, sometimes I'll be singing a song up here. I've done it just, uh, I can't remember if it was the last service or the one before that. I got to sing the song. I almost got to cry and singing the song. You know, you get choked up. You hit certain parts. You know, you're just, you know. But then there's times when you're just singing words. And you know what that is? That's not giving an offering to God the best you have. And nothing says that it will be easy to do every time. But every time we come into the house of God, 
we should try to give God our best offering we can do that night or that day. We should try to give God our best all the time. You know, let me read the rest of this. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is uh, contemptible. And if you offer the blind for uh, sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lamb and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto the governor. Will he pl be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? He's talking about, they got to work, they just bring, they just go out and pick the one that they didn't, the animal that they didn't care anything about anymore and carry it up there and sacrifice it. But he says, look, if you had the governor come over, and the governor's standing there in front of you, and he's looking to see what you're offering, and he's actually looking at it and seeing it. Would he be happy with it? No, he wouldn't. Well, he's trying to get them to understand that God is looking at that sacrifice and seeing that it's an imperfect sacrifice. Right. Right. Amen. He's looking at it and seeing God knows where your sacrifice comes from. It has to come from the heart. That's right. If we allow just what we don't care about to go in, Remember, go back. Sin creeps in at the door. No, no. You start getting a getting complacent. You start getting angry. Mm -hmm. Cain did. See, the Lord. when when God kind of corrected him on it, Cain got angry. Yeah. You see, you could say, and I used to when I read this, when I read this. I always thought, well, Cain just got jealous of Abel because God picked him over him. But let's look at it from this aspect. He got mad because God corrected him and told him exactly what he should have done and he didn't do it. And that made him mad. How many people do you know that can't take correction? That's right. Yes, sir. How many people do you know that if you say, if you say, uh, I mean, Brother Jody was we're trying to figure out, we're figuring out a song right here. Brother Jody said, he said, I think it goes up to that note. I said, well, we've been playing this one. I, I've done it, and we've both done it, and it sounded good. Mm. But I know people that, if you say, no, that ain't right, yeah, it is, too. <laughs> Who do you think you are trying to correct me? <laughs> you know, that's just like so many people that have, they, they want to use the excuse of getting run off from church just because somebody come up and told them. You know, somebody, some brother or sister might mention to them, you know, well, that's kind of bad what you're doing. Oh, who are they to judge me? I'm out of here. <laughs> you see, sin has crept in. Yes, because sir. what they were doing to begin with was mediocre. Mm -hmm. What they were doing was just showing up. What they were doing was just trying to get the prize. You see, I, I, that's one of the things I, I really, and y'all, most of y'all that are in the adult class, y'all know, the saved once saved, always saved thing. You see, there's too many people, too many people that will come to church for a little while and get baptized and say they're saved, and then they never go back to church. That's right. Through me. You see, that's not carrying on to the end. And that's not so. And there's going to be a lot of people with blood on their hands trying to tell people that. But the thing is, is that we're here to tell them that ain't it. That ain't it. You see, <laughs> we have to give God our best. If Amen. we expect to get in the rest. You know, I, I used to talk about uh, uh, Brother Clark used to come here. I, 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 me and him was talking about one day in the adult class. I was talking about, you know, when when we're going to, somebody has trouble or their the house burns and stuff like that, we'll ask, they'll ask for donations of clothes and stuff. When you go to your closet, do you get the new stuff? Do you get the stuff? You go with the shirt. Brother Josh, would you go with the shirt you love to wear? <laughs> would you go to them jeans that fit you just perfectly, but you know that Probably that's their should. size? Probably should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
told me. That's my point exactly. You see, when we're going to give an offering for something, if you really want a blessing from it, you're going to have to give your best. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you go in there, and you know them jeans that fit you just right. You know it's hard to find a pair of jeans that fit you just right. But you know that's their size. Well, I got this other pair. They're just a little bigger. I don't hardly ever wear them. See, you're giving them something that you don't care anything about having anyway. So what offering is that? It's no sacrifice. Is it? The only way it's a sacrifice is if you give up something that you really like to do. <laughs> okay. Now we can get home by coming to church. You see, some people consider it a sacrifice just not to go do what they really want to do and come to church. They don't want to sacrifice that. Obviously, there's a lot of people that wouldn't willing to make a sacrifice tonight or they'd have been here. Have you ever really thought about that? You're not willing to sacrifice what you want to do. Well, you know, let's go back to the scripture like a little while ago. God's not looking right at it. <laughs> He's not really paying attention to that. It's just weird. Bless him, Lord. It, it's, God's not really looking at that. He's not paying attention to that. Oh, yes, he is. He, and I'll tell you something. He notices more of what you don't do than he does what you do. <laughs> Uh, I ain't got word to back that up, but I just feel that way. <laughs> so if you feel like writing that in, go ahead. But we have to understand that when we come and offer, if you want to make an offering to somebody, if you want to make an offering to God, you need to at least try to do the best you can. Look, it's not always going to feel good. Everything ain't always going to be going okay. Is it? So if you come on to church anyway, and you come on to see God anyway, and you come on to show God worship and praise anyway, you are making a sacrifice. Amen. And you are offering God as best as you can offer God. You may have a headache. You may feel bad. You may come here and not feel too good. So many times I came here and I didn't feel too good, but I felt better when I left, Sister Brown. I mean, truly, I'm just being honest. And, and so many times we have to we have to fight this and fight that. Oh, man, it'd be so easy just to sit here. It'd be so easy just to sit at the back and let the service go on, and I'll go eat at the Mexican restaurant. I'll let the preacher get up. He'll preach. They might sing a closing song, and I'll go home. Where did I finish reading that, man? And now I pray you beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your persons, saith the Lord of hosts. Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you. What? God has no pleasure in you. And as a matter of fact, it says, I have no pleasure in you. If you're not at least willing, give me a sacrifice. God ain't interested in you. Uh, well, Man. Well. That's rough to hear, ain't it, Brother James? Sometimes. It is. Hmm. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. So if your offering is mediocre a lot, you're not giving an offer very much because the word just said, God said, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. Mm. Oh, you know, we, we like to look at how we believe, that we believe. We ain't got to, so be it, that's all. You know, know what you believe. You believe. Well, do you believe in Jesus? Okay, nobody believes in Jesus. 
Who do you believe in? I just asked. Do you believe in Jesus? Amen. Yes, sir. You see, this may take a little sacrifice and take a little offering, but can you say Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. You see, don't you feel better already? <laughs> Class participation. You see, we'll sit there and get in the mundane. And we'll sit there and think about what we got to do at work tomorrow. And we'll sit there and think about brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so over there or what they're doing outside or what they're doing back there with the kids or how my kids acting or this or that. When we should be listening to the Word of God. Right. Yes, sir. And showing God, even though it may be a sacrifice to you to sit and listen to, uh, look, so many times it is a sacrifice for those of us that may have heard the exact same message before. But that just because I've heard it before doesn't mean everybody's heard it before. So what's it to me to sacrifice that little bit of time and get behind the preacher and push him? Give it to him, preacher. Give it to him. I know I've heard it. I like it then. Let's hear it again. Don't let it be mundane. Bless him, Jesus. Don't let it be just to get through it. Show God that you care. Amen. You know what? So many times I'm guilty as anybody. We all. You know, we try to, you know, uh, somebody that preaches can get in a rut about preaching because you'll start reading, you'll go, Lord, I didn't preach that three four times. Or <laughs> I, Brother Charles, just read them scriptures another night. How am I going to do a message out of that, Lord? Well, you ain't going to do much more of that after you are. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little bit of sacrifice. Sometimes hey. it takes effort. And if you're not willing to put forth effort for God, God doesn't have to be willing to put any effort towards you. That's right. That's what the Word says. It just told us that. That's right. You see, sometimes we need to hear it. We, if we don't hear it, we don't really believe it. It's just like we don't see God. So sometimes we want to do this. We ain't worried about it. You know, God will get over it. Who was it said that? Oh, yeah. Brother Charles just get over it. I looked at Brother Ben and I said, we've heard that a bunch in the past. In a totally different context. <laughs> Sometimes we do have to get over being in a rut. Sometimes we do have to be get over being in the mundane. You see, sometimes we have to get over when somebody corrects us and not get angry like Cain did. You see, that can be one of the true fruits of the Spirit. Amen. That's the hardest time not to get angry when somebody tells you, look, you messed up. <laughs> now, if you look back and they're talking about something that didn't happen or wasn't true, then you've got words to stand and say, in a different way, not getting angry. We say, bro, you don't know what you're talking about. Amen. Or just explain to them, that ain't what happened. But we can't let our people and us use it for an excuse to keep us out of the house of God. Because if we do that, God hasn't got any, he hasn't got any unction to do anything for you. You know, I, I, I have to say, before I ever got in church back years ago, God did save me from a bunch of things. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And why he did was only had to be because he wanted me to do something later on. Yes, because I wasn't living for him then. And I wasn't asking him to do nothing then unless I got at death's door looking at about to crash or something like that. You see, when you're facing God, it gives you such a different persona. Amen. You know, if you think about that, think about it in that context. You know, it's just like uh, we used to talk about if you're sitting there watching TV and Jesus was sitting right beside you, would you turn the channel? Or would you be embarrassed to cut the TV off? Well, I want to tell y'all something. And Brother Charles just spoke a while ago. God is always watching us. Yes, he is. His face is on you. Yes, if you're a is. child of God, his face is on you. 
That's right. If, if you can't comprehend that, look at it as one of his angels is looking at you. Because the word says he gives his angels charge over, you know, to take care of us and help us, his helpers and stuff. He puts them to, sends them to do things. So if you can't understand how God can be face to face with all of us all the time, But God's always aware of one of his children. If you ain't one of his children, he ain't necessarily aware of you. Oh, he knows about you. But you don't know him. <laughs> Where did I stop reading that? Ten. I'm not going to read ten. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye have profaned it, in that ye say, The table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. See, it, these scriptures is just saying exactly what we were just talking about. People say, oh, what's the use of living for God? What's the use of all that going and worship stuff? What's the use of all that stuff? I'll tell you what the use of it is. If you die, you're going to hell. Amen. If you don't do that and you die, you're going to hell. That's right. It's plain and simple. Amen. So you're making the choice now whether you want to go to heaven you want to go to hell. If you're going to make a pure from the heart sacrifice to God, and I know, look, I know we, I know we can't always be 100% all the time and we're not going to be. But we have to be striving to try to do the best we can at the time. Yes, sir. And we all know that so many times we are not doing that. Mm -hmm. We could be doing a little better, but we're not. <laughs> you said also, behold, what a weariness is it. And you have snuffed it in. In other words, you like, <laughs> even the priest at this time, they were like, hmm, well, whatever. Hmm. How many times have you ever heard, whatever? Uh -huh. Always preaching that again, whatever. <laughs> Always church night again, whatever. <laughs> How long ago has it been, Brother Josh, you said, whatever. You didn't say it tonight, did you? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I said it. That's right. We all have. Let's get this over with. How many times have you heard that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. one day three, 13? You said, also, behold, what a weariness is it. And ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And ye brought that which was torn... And the lame and the sick, thus you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and boweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. God's getting pretty rough right there. You know, it's kind of like the. It, it's kind of like the, the couples that volunteered. They were going to sell their sell some property, and they were giving it all to the church. Well, they sold it and kept back part of it. And God struck both of them dead. That's right. Sure did. Now, we don't see that happen face to face anymore. We don't see those kind of things. And, you know, we don't hear about those things much, that much anymore. But flip over to the third chapter, verse 6 and 7. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But Ye said, Wherein 
shall we return? God says, I change not. That's right. When it comes to offering and sacrifice, God still has the same opinion of it. He is still a respecter of an offering. You know, I said at the first there, I was talking about that's not the only time. See that chapter? I didn't read the first few verses because I was afraid I'd run on. But uh, you see, if you go and read those first that uh, first few verses of chapter 1, uh, it's talking about uh, Jacob and uh, Esau. And God says he loved Jacob and hated Esau. See, you can look at that the same way. God loved Abel, and he hated Cain. Now, some people say, well, that's awful to say God hated somebody. We see in the con, you got to, here we go again, you got to study the word. See, in this time, hated means didn't think as much of. Didn't respect. Just like it said with Abel and Cain. He respected Abel's but he had no respect for Cain. Jacob goes along with talking about Israel and the blessing of Israel and all that. Esau was different. It wasn't that important. He hated it. And the scripture says hated, but he didn't like as much. You know, that we kind of use that as a harsh term to say hated. But in this context, it's talking about there was less love for that than there was the other. Just like God doesn't hate a mediocre sacrifice, but he doesn't appreciate it. Does that make more sense? I know the scripture said he would not even take it from your hand. In other words, he just said you're not even making a sacrifice at all. But you see, it's hard for us to see that to, in our the way we see because it seems like me and Brother Billy are two different people. And what it may take to, in a sacrifice in his life may not be a sacrifice for me. It's just like we talked about the woman that went and gave all she had. It was only just a little bit. And she gave all she had. And God thought more of that than he did the ones that give so much. Because they weren't given all they had. They were just mundane, given what they you know, to get by. Matter of fact, we talked about in adult class how they would go and get change for their money and put it in a bag so when it fell through where they dropped their offering in there, it made more noise when it hit the bottom. Boy, that's getting... <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that gets into, what's it called? Uh, uh, that's the spirit of vanity. You know, we can get a spirit of vanity if we're not careful. See, that can go over into showing up just so you can be seen. Showing up just so nobody will be talking about you. You're vain enough to make people see you just so they don't have anything bad to say about you. But see, you're worried about the wrong one when you're worried that way. See, when we show up, it's to offer God worship and praise. Or at least it should be. It's to do the work of God. It's to show God I'm willing to do it. Whether I'm doing it the best I can do it or not, I am trying to do it. But I should be trying to do it the best I can possibly do. And if I'm not at least striving to try to do that, I know i got something I need to be working on. We're never going to be at that perfect point where we think of everything perfectly and in order and right and everything. But we can always be striving and trying and trying harder and put a little more sacrifice in and go in there and get that better pair of jeans to give out. Hand to hand. We can get that nicer shirt next time. Somebody needs something. You just go in and get the best thing you got. You see, that's a true sacrifice. When you're walking up to go into the restaurant, get money. All you got is five dollar bills. You know exactly how much your dinner's gonna cost. And somebody ask you for a handout. Suddenly a handout doesn't mean as much to you as it does if you got ten or twelve dollars. Or does it? 
suddenly we become very critical of what this person's going to do with that money. We're worried about, they're going to go buy alcohol for that. Well, they're going to buy some cheap alcohol. We know they can't buy no drugs with it. So you see, suddenly we start looking for reasons why not to give that better offer. I'm using that for an example. I know. I bet people go to math for money. I need big money because I can look at them and tell them. Yeah. But especially when they give me one of the wild stories. You know, it's kind of funny. I, let me read this. Did I read 14? I didn't read 14. Yeah, I did. Let me read these last few scriptures. Where did I stop at? I'm going to read, go to 16. And how, I use this group, I use this 18th uh, verse, I named a sermon after this 18th verse one time before. And it had nothing to do with what I'm preaching about tonight. Totally different meaning, but using the same scripture. I'm going to start at 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. A book of remembrance on those. They talk with each other. They're talking about God. They're wanting to do something for God. They're worshiping God. They're getting together. And they're showing God honor, glory, and praise. And God has a book of remembrance for it. <laughs> oh. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will uh, spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. And I, I had a message one time called uh, Return and Discern. But you see, if we're, our offering if we break the mundane, and we break the usual, and we break the so-so, and we break through those things, if we start breaking through those things, it's harder for sin to get in. The door for sin isn't open years wide. You see, when we get into mundane, and we don't have, and when we get into the, we're, we're just, you know, all right, okay, all right, whatever, whatever. You see, there's no wall built up of power of God around you that helps keep that door of sin closed. When we show an offer, and when we offer that better offer, when we make a sacrifice offer to God, we're stirring up the Holy Ghost. We're stirring up that Spirit. And when that's, every one of y'all know when the Spirit is stirred up, there ain't nothing getting in that. There ain't nothing bad getting in that. When that Spirit's stirred up, there ain't nothing bad in the room. Amen. If you look up and folks start easing out the back door, that means the bad's leaving. Because <laughs> it ain't going to be around the Holy Ghost Spirit. It starts getting nervous. And like it said, you know, even the devil's knees not, they tremble. And boy, that Spirit of God gets stirred up. How's anything else going to get in on you? If you're giving that sacrifice and that offer of praise and worship to God, that sin is so much harder for you to get any closer to you. It'll make you want to turn the channel sometimes. It'll make you want to change the radio station sometimes. It'll make you want to not hang around with certain folks sometimes. It'll make you not want to go to certain places sometimes. It'll make you appreciate being other places sometimes. It'll make you appreciate what you do have. It will make you appreciate being able to get up in the morning and being able to dress yourself. Bless him, Lord. It will make you appreciate going to the doctor and finding out you ain't got a blockage. <laughs> when we break free from the mundane, from the so-so, because you see, there ain't nothing so-so about God. It's easy to get that mindset because God, we don't think God is sitting beside us. We don't thank God is looking at us all the time. But if we start getting that mindset, Brother Josh, that God is with you, 
no matter where you're at, what you're doing. It will change you. Yes, it will. It will change you. It will change your actions. It will change your continence. You know, I, uh, I love that song that uh, Sister Debbie and Sister Brenda song. Wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now, but I wouldn't want to go through it again either. <laughs> I've come through some stuff that lay no way I don't have to go back through it again. Amen. Ain't no way. Matter of fact, I might, I might take something for some of it. <laughs> but I wouldn't take anything for the last, since 99. <laughs> You know why? Because I've had the Holy Ghost since 99. There's still a lot of things happen to me that I sure wouldn't want to have to live through again. I, you know, I, we've had things happen and this and that. I wouldn't want to have to live through those things again. But I can always look back and say I'm still here and God is with me. Amen. Right. And I'm still striving to break through from the mundane and from the usual. Amen. I'm trying to break free from the just get through it. I'm trying to break free from the old oh Lord as we need to die. Got to work. Had to work today. Got to work tomorrow. Break free from that. You go. Praise the Lord. It's Wednesday night. Thank God. <laughs> I'm gonna go get an infill. Yes, sir. Go get a charge. You see, if we look at it from a positive aspect, it gives less room for the negative aspect. Mm -hmm. Which is like what we're talking about. If you're breaking free from the usual and the mundane and all those things and the usual, all the things you normally think you always do, and you break free from those and you're looking for God, the bad thoughts don't come in years easily. It takes way more effort from them. Mm -hmm. We can break through that. Church, let's break free from all the usual. Let's break through from all the simple stuff. Let's not be looking at this or that or wondering this or wondering that or thinking the other or thinking this. When we come in here, we need to focus on God. We need to focus on the preacher. We need to focus on praise and worship. We need to focus on showing, trying to show God the honor he so deserves. There is no way we can show him enough honor. But we can always try to show him the best we can do. Yes. The best we can do. Brother Tom.